the best thing we can do to reduce our carbon footprint is shop local. Now, whether that is plants or meat, it doesn't matter. The less transport time, the less emissions. And here is why I tend to think meat is more sustainable in this regard. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient dense way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share and make sure to subscribe. And make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook where I share new posts every single day. Today, we are going to be going over and responding to an article that came out of the UK called, So it turns out tofu and all these other vegan foods are ruining the planet. I wanted to make a video on this article because I think it brings up some good points. Some points that often get overlooked or maybe some people are choosing to overlook, but also, and there is a but, there were a few things in this article that I think are misleading and that I don't necessarily agree with. So we'll get into all that as well. I came across this article through Diana Rogers who is a registered dietitian, a real food dietitian, as she calls herself, who lives on an organic farm and she has a lot of great info on regenerative agriculture. So if you wanna know more after watching this video and dig deeper into this topic, I will link her website down below. But anyways, let's get into it. A new study by Dr. Graham McAuliffe has revealed tofu could be more harmful to the planet than chicken, beef, and pork. Speaking at the National Farmers Union, he said, after researching tofu, he concluded it potentially causes more environmental damage because of the production to make the processed protein source. But if you look at tofu, which is processed so there's more energy going into its production, when you correct for the fact that the protein in it is not as digestible compared to the meat-based products, you can see that it could actually have a higher global warming potential than any of the monogastric animals. To get the same amount of protein, tofu is worse. This is one thing that often gets overlooked when we compare plant protein to animal protein, the bioavailability. I talked about the protein digestibility corrected amino acid score. Wow, that is always a mouthful. In a video from a couple of weeks ago where I was discussing pea protein, but basically it's a way of scoring protein sources that takes into consideration how much of that protein we're actually absorbing. A perfect score is one, and for example, beef scores at 0.92. But here I don't see why the author actually brought this up because soy actually has a score of 0.91. So basically the same as beef. I tried to find the score for tofu specifically, but couldn't find anything. So it might be worse than beef, but as far as I can tell, it's just about the same. You can use the argument of bioavailability against other plant protein sources, beans and legumes, for example, but yeah, it just doesn't work here. What I will say though, is that 100 grams of beef gives you 26 grams of protein, whereas 100 grams of tofu gives you only eight grams of protein. So maybe that was what he was getting at, but then why mention bioavailability? Anyways, <laughs> let's move on. Tofu has also been found as damaging for the environment by the WWF 10 years ago. They found that the production of soya, which is what tofu is made out of, increases dependence on imported commodities. AKA the more tofu we use, the more gets shipped slash flown over and produces more carbon emissions. A lot of tofu we consume in the UK is produced in Japan, the US and the Netherlands. So a lot of emissions get produced just so you can feel like an environmental hero. Yes, this I agree with. The number one cause of carbon emissions is air transport. And the best thing we can do to reduce our carbon footprint is shop local. Now, whether that is plants or meat, it doesn't matter. The less transport time, the less emissions. And here is why I tend to think meat is more sustainable in this regard. First of all, a lot of us in the Western world live in a climate where we do not have access to local fruit and veg all year round. I'm from Canada. And what 
fruit and vegetables are we growing in the middle of winter? Not very many, if any at all. But pretty much everywhere in the world has access to local meat all year round. The cows might spend more time indoors during the winter, but they are still from the same place and less transport time is required. I'm not even going to get into the whole argument from Cowspiracy that cow farts are having a huge negative impact on the environment. This claim has been debunked and the original paper that it came from has been retracted. Next, the article moves on to talk about some different plant foods and their environmental impact. Where would the basic... I just realized that I've never actually swore on my channel and I'm not gonna start now. B words B without their precious avocado toast brunches. Well, in a more environmentally sustainable world for one. The production of avocados requires a lot of water more than double that of oranges. The increase in popularity has also meant more land has been cleared to plant more avocado trees. Then the article goes on to talk more about the carbon footprint. So this is the same argument as before. Now, as someone who actually lives in Australia, this isn't really an issue here because we actually grow avocados locally. The production of avocados is also causing a rise in gang warfare. Various cartels in Mexico have decided to capitalize on the growing avocado trend and demand money from farmers for protection. If the farmers don't agree to give a share of their profits, many farms are burnt down by gangs. I mean, this is pretty insane and pretty tragic, but also irrelevant if we're just talking about the environment. And this is actually one thing that really bugs me with the whole vegan versus non-vegan argument, the amount of red herrings used on both sides. A red herring is something that misleads or distracts from a relevant or important question. So in this case, we're talking about the environment and the article brought up gangs. And I see this a lot from the other side as well. Personally, this happens to me when I'm trying to have a discussion with someone about nutrition Hands down, animal foods are the most nutritious foods. They are complete protein sources with bioavailable protein. They are rich in nutrients in forms that are easier for our bodies to absorb when compared to plants. Omega-3 is one example of this. The form of omega-3s that is in things such as chia seeds, hemp seeds, it is ALA, which has to be converted for the body to use. The type of omega-3 that is in fish this is already pre-converted, and this is the case for several other nutrients as well. But when I'm having this discussion and trying to make my case, the response I often get is, well, what about the environmental impacts of meat? Or how are we going to feed the entire world with meat? That is irrelevant when we're only talking about nutrition. Yes, I understand this whole diet war. There's so many moving parts. There's so many factors, but we need to focus on one at a time and not just jumble them all together or we're never gonna get anywhere. <laughs> okay, that was a bit of a tangent. Let's get back to the article. Unless you've been living under a rock, you will know that palm oil is in nearly everything and is really bad for the planet. Palm oil is used in a lot of foods that vegans rely on, like nut butters, vegan cheese, vegan butters, etc. The production of palm oil is one of the major contributors to deforestation, which is endangering a number of species and produces millions of greenhouse gases. Okay, so I know that a lot of vegans actually avoid palm oil for this reason and that a lot of vegan products actually don't contain it. So again, I'm not really sure why this was brought up. However, there is a case to be made that palm oil can be sustainable. When palm is grown properly, it is actually extremely sustainable, even more so than coconut. Palm plants are really tall and the fruit can continue to be harvested year after year, I believe for around 40 years. So they grow upwards and they don't take up a lot of space laterally. And palm oil is good for cooking because it's a stable type of fat. Palm oil is a million times better than any vegetable oil, which is often used in these products instead. 
There's also a company called Palm Done Right that is going to third world countries where palm is being grown unsustainably and helping them change their practices. So yeah, it's really not black and white. Palm can be grown sustainably and it's really a shame that it has been the target of so much outrage. Coconut everything. Flour, milk, sugar, oil. Coconut is in literally everything. Obviously we don't grow coconuts in the UK and neither do a lot of countries. Meaning again, we have to incur a lot of carbon emissions in order to get coconutty goodness. Not only that, but the increase in demand has led to farmers having to use chemical fertilizers to ensure productivity of the soil. I think the best argument that this article made was the transport time that it takes to get these trendy foods and the emission that that causes. At the end of the day, it is really hard, if not impossible, to know what the answer is. Again, this is a topic that's not black and white. Someone in Canada who swears off eating meat is going to have a bigger carbon footprint come winter. At the end of the day, my stance is just buy local. Buy local as much as you can. Your health comes first, prioritize that, and then when you're making buying decisions, support local farms and support your local economy. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. That's all I have for you today. Let me know in the comments down below <laughs> your thoughts on this whole topic. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share. If you're not already subscribed, what are you doing? Click that subscribe button. I upload new videos twice a week. It's a really, really fun time around here, I swear. <laughs> Thanks again, guys. I will see you next time. Bye.